scratch absolute zero followers, this would be my exact plan to hit 10,000 followers in 30 days. We're talking. All right. So does your content creation plan look anything like this? Everything is meant to succeed. This is why I always tell you guys, it's not an if you will win, it's a when you're going to win. If you have laws and formulas to follow, then you don't have to roll like, like anything like this. Anything. So it wasn't that he was just rich because these dudes that I'm talking about are rich, but his fame was in all nations. Imagine being able to dock at any shore. And as soon as they hear your name, because they didn't have TV back then or text messaging, so they didn't know what he looked like. But as soon as they hear your name, you're on this foreign soil. As soon as somebody translate to the, the native language that you're King Solomon, immediately they automatically know who you are. The Indians put the, the damn spears and the damn arrows down. I'm like, oh, snap, that's Solomon. We ain't finna, like, kill him. You guys see this? Type in the chat if your content creation plan looks anything like this, okay? So there are 26 topics on my content creation plan, all right? Someone said there is simplicity in Christ, <laughs> all right? So I'm gonna show you guys today how to dominate any niche at any sales point, any price, using biblical business principles like we used to do on the Sabbath day, all right? And the Bible was written for our learning, everything in there, okay? So instead of learning from some guru who hasn't stood the test of time, none of these gurus you see on YouTube, no matter how much money they're making, can even pale in comparison to the, uh, the legends of the scriptures, namely King Solomon, the wisest king of all time and the richest man of all time on earth. No matter what the Jeff Bezos and all of them dudes is talking about, they couldn't even pale a comparison. Okay, so I'm going to go over the content creation plan that I have as well, and I'm going to help you create your own content creation plan using biblical business principles, and it will establish you as an authority figure in your niche. No matter what business you have, no matter what industry you're in, right now, in the age of social media, content creation, that is, that's where you want to start. And that's how you're going to dominate. You don't want to just spend money on paid ads all the time and all of that stuff. That stuff wears out. Uh, you get ad fatigue. You have to constantly keep switching out the ads and the platforms can increase the cost per acquisition. So if you can master the content creation game, whether and you don't even have to be the face of your company, but someone of your company needs to, someone or something like I always be telling you guys needs to be handling this task of content creation. So why do I have 26 different topics? Because those 26 different topics are typically discussed in my niche of marketing and advertising. So you want to write out as many uh, uh, topics as you can inside your niche that resonate, that is relatable to the people that you're trying to reach out to. All right. And I'm going to give you a biblical business plan for content creation. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, and you guys type in the chat when you can see my screen. OK, well, first, let's go ahead and go to somebody that you guys know, because we're going to save the best for last. Let's go here first. Boom. OK, so you guys have heard of Albert Einstein, I'm pretty sure before uh, this one, this quote right here says, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. All right. A good example of this is Myron Golden. Uh, if you guys know who Myron Golden is, he uh, created a video called How to Make Your Income Fly Like a Plane or something like that. And he broke down the different components and, and the me uh, mechanics of a plane and like the lift versus drag and all of that different stuff that makes a plane, even though it's heavy, even though it's made out of metal, it makes it fly the same way a bird would. OK, so he broke it down like how you can make your income do that. So if you're a pilot or if you've ever flown on a plane before, how he broke it down, you'd be like, yo, OK, so now you see money the same way you see the, the plane flying in the air because it seems like an impossible task. I don't know if you guys seen some of those shipping planes that are gigantic. You're like, how does that big hunk of metal end up in the sky? So he broke it down using comparisons to something that is relatable to anybody that's ever flown or uh, you know been a passenger on a plane. OK, so I have all these different topics that are relatable to people in my niche. And I'm going to use comparisons to even more relatable things and display my wisdom and experience in life. And that's going to help them learn and position me as an authority at the same time. All right. So if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it enough. Uh, then this one right here says everything should be made as simple as possible. No simpler, but no simpler. Now, let me explain it. A lot of so-called gurus or teachers or coaches on YouTube, what they'll do is they'll say they're going to teach you something and then they'll make it complex on purpose, uh, hoping that you guys will pay for them to break it down, pay for the course or pay for something because you just don't you don't understand. I've gotten where I am today and sold a lot of courses and coaching by making things simplistic. A lot of the people that's bought my 
paid programs made money with the stuff just off of the free stuff I was putting on YouTube. I don't hold anything back, right? Okay, so now what we want to do is let's head over to the scriptures real quick. We're going to go over to, if you got a, if you have a, um, a Bible with you right now, that'll be good. That'll be good. You can read along. Never trust any man, not even me. Don't trust any man. So you always want to read along. When we're doing these classes, read along. Okay. All right. So go to Romans. Let me share this tab now. Go to Romans chapter 12, verse eight. Romans chapter 12, verse eight. And you'll see why I use biblical business principles because the Bible makes it so simple to succeed. God didn't create flaw. Men became flawed when they started trying to do their own thing and make their own paths. So what does that mean? Uh, Following Christ, everything is meant to be perfect. Following Christ, everything is meant to succeed. This is why I always tell you guys, it's not an if you will win, it's a when you're going to win. If you have laws and formulas to follow, then you don't have to roll the dice. You're not crossing your fingers. It's not a gamble. You don't have to wonder, right? Okay, so watch this. Romans chapter 12, verse 8. You guys might want to write this stuff down, all right? Even if you don't believe in the Bible, even if you don't believe in God, you're some type of Buddhist or heathen or something weird, check this out. This will change your life and, you know, it'll, it'll increase your wages, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so check this out. It says, we'll start with, uh, we'll just start with five. Let's start with five. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. So y'all heard that, right? Every last one of y'all watching right now has gifts. So a lot of, I heard some people talking about some, hey, everybody can't be an entrepreneur. Everybody can't create a business. If we're made in the image of our father, then we're made to be creators too, because he's the ultimate creator, right? Exactly, right? So everybody can be an entrepreneur, a creator, sometime a product creator, business owner, coach, helper, or something like that. That's what we're made to do to increase or enhance the human experience and make things better for everybody. Okay. So it says we're being, we've been given gifts according to the grace that is given to us. So everybody's gift isn't the same. And the reason why a lot of people are experiencing uh, hardships with success is because they'll see somebody else's success and think that's supposed to be their success. Think that's supposed to be their path. So like, it's not natural. It's supposed to be effortless. This, you know, when you're in your gift and your purpose, this is why I, you know, I have, um, uh, marketing courses and all of that extra stuff. But when I work with someone one-on-one, like I have AJU VIP right now, I have them creating products and services based off of their gifts, based off of what we can figure out to be their gifts, based off of things that God has brought them through and they've been able to achieve in life because everybody has a gift according to the grace. Okay. It might not be you being a great marketer or something. Okay. So now let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Okay. Now watch this. Watch this. And this is why I do what I do. It says, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Okay. So when you're teaching someone, you're not supposed to upbraid knowledge. You're not supposed to say, I will tell you this, but I ain't going to tell you until you get my premium program or something like that. No, no. If you help people, they get good results and they see you not uh, trying to sham them or hold back and all of that stuff and put things behind a locked wall or something. They buy your stuff anyway. All of my courses, I done did all that stuff for free on YouTube and people still was buying them because they just want to be closer to me, have more personal uh, 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 communication with me in groups and communication, text message, all of that different stuff like that is is. You're not supposed to lock up the information. (laughs) All knowledge is shared knowledge. There's nothing new under the sun. So if you're going to give, it says he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. So I just wanted to give you guys that scripture. So now we're going to run over there to the main, uh, the main scripture that we're going to be talking about today. And uh, you guys are going to be able to see how I came up with my content plan. All right. So now I want you guys to come to first Kings, come to first Kings chapter four. And we're going to start with uh, verse 29. OK, make sure you guys are staying to the end on this, because this is something that is, you're going to be able to take with you. OK, I hope you guys understand that. We got to grow up. I shouldn't have to say stay to the end. If you uh, have a business, then go ahead and try to just do it with ads. As soon as you do it with ads, as soon as you cut the ads off, the business stops. It stops. So through these different platforms, there's something called search engines. And when you create videos, they can stay on the platforms for the lifetime of the platform. And if it's a good search engine like YouTube is, like Google is, and a couple other platforms, then it's going to be evergreen, meaning you'll be getting clients and customers from 
from videos that you made two, three years ago, right? Books that you recorded one time, you're still getting paid for, right? Or paid from. All right. So now you guys should be seeing, let me make sure we're on the same page. Are you guys seeing, let me know. Are you guys seeing uh, 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29? And this is how I got the content plan. Watch this. This is how Solomon went viral at an age where there was no internet. There was no computers. He was known around the globe just based off of word of mouth across seas. People were quoting him and they never even met him or seen him in person before. There was no TV, none of that. So how do you go viral in the ancient time? So just imagine that. Most people would consider that impossible. Oh, that's crypto. Uh, you're crippled without technology. That's what a lot of people think. Oh, I would do this, but I ain't got no internet. I would do this, but I ain't got that. Check this out. How do they handle business without it even being invented yet? Right? So watch this. 29 says, and God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much, pay attention, and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. So there are things that God has brought you through uh, different events, certain obstacles, problems, uh, different achievements, whatever it is that God has brought you through that you are now an expert on. You don't know it yet because you're looking at everybody else's life on social media and you're thinking there's nothing special about you. But if you've endured, uh, if you if you got a lifelong marriage, right, you married your, your freaking high school sweetheart or something and y'all still together all these years later, dog, you can be a marriage counselor. You don't even think of that, did you? Oh, your marriage don't have to be perfect. It's about you guys still being together and enduring, right? What What about if you came home from prison and you didn't go back into the streets? You actually made some of yourself. It's a legion of brothers and sisters that are in that same situation that wish they knew how to not end up back in prison when they come out. Like God brought you through that so that you can become a bridge to those people. So you're an expert now. You could be a coach now. You don't even think about that, right? You don't even think like that. What if you are a cancer survivor where everybody thought you were going to die and, and, and they said it wasn't no hope and you actually survived? Do you know that you can speak, do motivational speaking, create books and, of encouragement and quotes and courses and all of that stuff and tell people how you did it holistically and spiritually and all that? Like, dog, anything you've ever been through and overcome, that is what God did there for you. He, that's your gift because it could have took you out if he wanted it to. But, but since you're still here, that's a sign that that's one of your gifts. So a gift is made to be given away. So like he said, he gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much and largeness of heart, uh, even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country. There are things that you have experienced with. You've seen firsthand that you've overcome or that you or you're like nobody knows it like you do. And if you just positioned yourself as the authority in that, you could name your price. You wouldn't have, there's no such thing as competition. You just have to get out there. You hear me? Okay, so check this out. It says, and all the wisdom of Egypt. Back then, Egypt was like the United States. And I would argue that it's still better and way more powerful than the United States will ever be, right? Not not the current state of Egypt. I'm talking about the, the Egypt back then. So watch this. For he was wiser than all men. So for anybody that wanted to contest that, I don't give a damn about none of these uh, these modern days want to be geniuses. I go off the scripture. The Bible says it's good to obey. It's, it's better to obey God rather than men. So you can't even battle me with that wisdom. Like Solomon was like the king of that wisdom stuff. You hear me? So he was wiser than all men, uh, wiser than Ethan, the Ezra, Ezraite and Heman uh, and Calcol and Darda, the sons of Mahal and his fame. Now, pay attention to this. Anybody that be want to go viral and all of that extra stuff, we're starting to get to the punchline right now. It says, and his fame was in all nations round about. Nowadays, we would call that fame virility, going viral, being known, having a reputation, clout, status, all of those things. His name was in all. Come on, man. There you, you got Jay-Z. But if you go to Brazil, they they don't really know him. If you go to Egypt, they don't really know him there. If you go to Spain, I'm pretty sure they don't know him there, right? Like you got 50 Cent. He's known in a few countries and stuff like that. So my, my point in my point in saying all this stuff is no matter who you look up to and study right now, none of those dudes or women are known in all nations. Come on. Yeah, like I thought, right? <laughs> Name one that's known in all nations. Can we go to Afghanistan and, and hear... hear uh, um, Jay-Z on the radio or people talking to Oprah and, and all of that stuff? No. So it wasn't that he was just rich because these dudes that I'm talking about are rich, but his fame was in all nations. Imagine being able to dock at any shore. And as soon as they hear your name, because they didn't have TV back then or text messaging, so they didn't know what he looked like. 
But as soon as they hear your name, you're on this foreign soil. As soon as somebody translate to the, the native language that you're King Solomon, immediately they automatically know who you are. The Indians put the, the damn spears and the damn arrows down. And like, oh, snap, that's Solomon. We ain't finna uh, kill him. You hear me? Like, imagine that. The only person that, that can be compared. I mean, well, not even compared, but the only person that is worldwide known, the only other one that is the king of that is Christ. So as far as men go, men, there have been many men that have tried to stand up to this task that's become richer than ever and all of that become wise to a lot of people, but none of them have been known in all nations. So when y'all ask me why I study the people of the Bible more than I study these these random gurus and all of that stuff, because if I want to be on a different level in life, I got to learn from the people that's on a different level, that was on a different level in their life. These dudes, not no offense, not trying to offend or anything like that, but they're nowhere near. They got penny candy money compared to, to a King Solomon, compared to Abraham. So, I mean... This is why I study biblical business principles. Okay, so his fame was known all about the nations. Now, check this out. It's going to break down his content creation plan. Okay, watch this. Okay, it says, and he spake 3,000 proverbs. Mm, proverbs are wise sayings. You know, things like analogies and parables and breakdowns and stuff like that, right? He spake 3,000 proverbs. Okay, but the key, you're going to learn the key in the next part. Okay. What's up, everybody? Hey, hey, it's all the new people coming on here. Okay. So it says, now watch this. And his songs were a thousand and five, one thousand and five songs. Now, when you guys see me start releasing music, don't think I'm being off, off, uh, thrown off track. Being all, oh, David doing all types of stuff. He all over the place. No, I'm, I told you guys, I don't experiment with you. I don't experiment with myself. If I see something work for somebody else, I'm doing exactly that. So he spake 3,000 proverbs. I'm going to do that in the form of videos. They might be shorts or long form videos. I don't know. So I'm going to have 3,000 uh, wise videos, like breaking everything down simplistically to where I know that people can get results to where it shows and proves that I am, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, the authority figure in marketing and advertising. Okay. And then his songs were a thousand and five. So I had to look at this. Do we just love music? Maybe he just loved music. Or maybe he was trying to reach people through a different medium. What do I mean by that? Okay. Well, he spake 3,000 proverbs. These could be in books and everything like that, but not everybody reads. Not everybody can come to his assembly and watch him speak. But one thing that is carried through generations and carried across freaking continents are songs, even back then. You see how smart, how genius this dude was? He was smart enough to know, okay, it ain't just going to be read. I need it to where it's catchy enough to where these, these proverbs, these wise sayings and stuff would stick. Just like these choruses on these dumb songs that y'all be listening to now today, they be dumbing you down. They stick in your head, right? They not like us. They not like it, right? Okay. Imagine wisdom on the beat. You understand? <laughs> I mean, I don't think it was on the beat back then, but you get what I'm saying. So he had a thousand and five songs. That would just program the masses with wisdom. People that never met him or seen him before, just walking around, quoting him and uh, paraphrasing and saying his stuff. You understand what I'm saying? Now, let me show you how you're supposed to do the content, right? I have these 26 topics for my niche, for my industry of marketing and advertising. You want to do the same thing, but you need the, in order for them to be effective. See, a person like Sam Ovens, uh, uh, I like Sam Ovens, but he'll only appeal to a certain type of entrepreneur. Uh, the entrepreneur that is extremely deep, Paul, right? Like extremely deep, has a very uh, uh, extensive vocabulary, uh, like things to be breaking down scientifically and very technical and all of that extra stuff. Those type of entrepreneurs, they would, uh, you know, he would appeal to them. They would, they would find him and they did. So he served his purpose. But the reason why King Solomon was able to reach so many nations across so many lands was because of simplicity, because of relate being relatable. I didn't want to say I was going to say relatability, but I don't know if that's a word, right? So he was extremely relatable. So he took his topics for his songs and his proverbs, and he uh, he did comparisons, made analogies and, and and metaphors and similes and stuff using other things that they know and use in their everyday life. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Okay, so thirty three says, and he spake of trees. What? Now, if you go on uh, Myron Golden's channel, you'll see a video. Uh, what's the name of that video? But he, he, he uses this analogy a lot. He'll talk about how um, in order to grow up, you have to grow down at the same time like a tree because we only see what's on the surface. 
right? And he compares that to how entrepreneurs expect success to be. Uh, I hope I ain't destroying this. But on the surface, we just see what, you know, it's growing towards the sun. Like, yo, that we want that to be us. But below the dirt, the roots are growing away from the sun. And, and, the, and the seed had to break down in order for that all to, like, you know, even start. So you have to tear down who you were in order to become who you want to. And you have to grow in different directions than what you're used to. And it's going to be very uncomfortable. So how he broke the tree down using the entrepreneurship stuff, like people was like, oh, snap, that, that make a lot of sense because a lot of people want results, but they expect to just go that way. They don't have to tear anything down or, or like renew themselves or anything like that. Right. So King Solomon, he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even into the hyssop that spring it out the wall. Now, pay attention. Watch this. He also spake of beasts. OK, so what what, what I mean, let me give you an example. Let, I'll just freestyle on the fly. Right. <sighs> uh, OK, let's see if I want rapid growth in my business. I would study the cheetah. Why would I study the cheetah? The cheetah has the fastest acceleration in the animal kingdom from zero to 60 in seconds, like a freaking car. Right. So what I would do is I would research why the cheetah has the fastest acceleration in the animal kingdom. And what I found was they have a, a lengthy spine, which allows them to like take deeper strides. Uh, their 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 bones are like super light, like aluminum and stuff, and their stride is is further. Right? What can I take from that in business? Okay, their bones are like aluminum, extremely light. So that means I want a business that's extremely lean, extremely lean. Okay, the spine being flexible, I need to be able to adapt to all different types of scenarios and situations that come up in my business. Do you see how you can study some? I mean, when you think about it, all the martial arts were created from studying insects and animals. So what the hell? The dude from my Airbnb calling me. It seemed like every single time I get on a live stream, people like want to pop up. OK, you're talking about some wrong call. Excuse that. OK, so he spake also a beast and fowl. OK, fowl is another word, birds and all of that extra stuff like that. Right. OK. And of creeping things. For example, of a creeping thing, uh, the most high God says, consider the ant and be wise. Right. Without who without ruler, without guide or overseeing uh, overseer prepares his meat for the winter. OK, so what does that mean? Like, how can we learn from the ant? It says the ant does not have any guide, ruler, or overseer. You can go out on your on your concrete right now and you'll see the ant always working. Even in the summertime, we like to take vacations, but you see a small ant, they understand, okay, this summer is not going to last long. I'm going to need to be able to eat underground when the snow is here. We don't think like that. When things are good, <laughs> we just want to party and take off. We don't think it's ever going to be a rainy day again. So he was <laughs> showing us that a freaking creeping thing, an ant can be wiser than us who have dominion. So he tells us to study. Why? Because these other creatures don't have free will. So if we study them, we get to closely observe the uh, uh, the laws and the natural order that God meant for things to be in. Since these other creatures can't say, you know what, I don't feel like building an animal or the ant colony today. Like since they can't do that, you can literally see them in their purpose every single day and see how it works in synergy and it's perfect and it's beautiful. So if we would take our will out of out of it for a minute. And we would consider what God's will is and what his purpose for us is and do it align. Does it align with our natural gifts? Then the success will be effortless. We have friction because we try to do our own thing. So right here is showing you that Solomon understood that there is a natural order. And if we study the natural order of things, our lives will be back in order. It's chaotic because we just make it up as we go. We freestyle. Am I lying? OK, so now and he studies the fishes. OK, so, for example, I was talking to you guys about getting clients and stuff a while ago. And I always talk about this. I use this as an example and I probably do a video on it, a deeper video on it. I talk about hot fish and I was uh, talking about a bear when they fish, how bears fish. You notice how we fish. It is very unnatural. Even the best fisherman is, is very unnatural. The best fisherman could not compete with a bear. What do I mean by it? OK. We will put on our fisherman uniform, get our bucket, fill it with ice and water, get our little radio. Well, that's back in the day. Our CD well, that's back in the day. Whatever we're going to play the music on, uh, get our bait, prepare to be out there for hours and go out there from sun up to sundown. And hopefully you leave with a bucket of fish to take home. On the flip side, you check out a bear. A bear will mosey his big self out of the woods, go straight over to the lake and just knock three or four fish out the water and walk away. <laughs> Why? Because it's a natural order to things. We try to just, we, we, since we want control and we want our will to be done, 
it conflicts with what God is trying to help us with. We can't hear him speaking to us and trying to give us the easy way to do things. So what do I mean by that? You'll be fishing like downstream at the calm parts of the water or the lakes. And you just got your little paws right out there. You try to do it and throw it into the deep end or something like that. And you sit there and you put your little, little bait on there and you hope that it comes to you. Right. OK, that's the client. We have bait. We call it a lead magnet. <laughs> and we tell people that the lead magnet is necessary. It's mandatory. You have to have a lead magnet bait in order to attract the fish or a.k.a. the client. Well, I believe that's because we are trying to capture cold fish. We're trying to capture cold fish. We're fishing where where they're out too thin, where they don't want to be caught. Think about that. Let that sink in. You're fishing where the fish don't want to be caught at. <laughs> Would it shock you to know that there are fish that want to jump out onto your plate? OK, just like there are clients that actually want help. But we spend all day emailing, cold emailing, doing outreach, prospecting strangers that never said they want to help and trying to increase the value of our bait. But if they don't give a dang about it, if they were never trying to be put on the hook in the first place, your bait can just be swam right past. Right. There are areas in the lake, in the water where the water becomes treacherous, where they swim upstream to spawn and to mate and then die. OK, so what am, I, what am I saying? If you look at the bear, go go to YouTube and look at a bear fish. They go upstream to where the fish are jumping out the water and they simply just open their mouths, pause, and the fish just jump in their mouth and they just sit there and gorge like it's a buffet. They just sit there. It'd be three bears want to catch a fish and the fish are just hopping out the water and stuff and they just going like that. That's it. No prospecting, no bait. The bear does not like it, you think you're so genius. These gurus think they're so genius. Well, if you're genius, why do you need bait? Why do we need bait? How come the fish won't just jump to us? Right. So when you study like we, we so prideful, you're like, oh, I'm, a, I'm a human. I have dominion over the animals. I'm the smartest. I created technology. All of the, <laughs> OK, but you got a lot of starving humans. You can rarely see animals starve unless they are injured. That's the only time you're going to see animals starve. They naturally, they naturally get it. They don't have to take a course. They don't have to get a coach or none of that. They naturally get it. So why not study what just naturally works effortlessly? So if you want clients, you need hot fish. There are places online where the hot fish are jumping out the water. Meaning saying they, hey, hey, I need somebody to help me with this website. I need somebody to help me get sales. I need somebody to run ads from. They, they, they hopping out the water. They have their wallets and their credit cards ready already. But we're learning from gurus who have achieved a certain amount of success. All praises to the most high. That's good. I'm not trying to bash anybody. You would be able to succeed faster with way less effort if you didn't study those gurus. And if you studied what God told you to study, what Solomon studied, he spake of beasts. That means he had to sit. That means you got to cut your TV off. Think about that. That sounds difficult, doesn't it? You got to you got to cut your TV off. Go outside in nature. Pull up next to a freaking praying mantis and just watch it all day. Put a freaking uh, 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 um, put a spider in there with the tarantula. Put a scorpion in there with the tarantula. Why would the scorpion win? Why would the uh, why would the praying mantis win? Why would they? You know what do they eat? Like how do they capture their food? Does the food come to them? Do they stay there? Do they camouflage? All of that stuff. You write out all these things and you see how you can make them relatable to your business strategy. And then nobody will be able to compete with you because they don't go that deep or that simplistic in two. OK, so he studied the fishes, the files, the creeping things. Now, watch this. And there now pay attention to this part. Pay attention to this part. This is the punchline of all of this for your content creation plan. It says, and there came all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon. They came to him. Mm. No, see, when you do paid ads and I'm not against paid ads every now and then I'll run a paid ad. Right. But I like to run a paid ad to a warm audience, meaning an audience that already know me kind of like just an, as an announcement type situation, not even really that salesy or anything like that. They all came to him. So he knew his target audience It's going to tell you who his target audience is right here. Watch this. All people came to hear the wisdom of Solomon, his target audience. And, and we have trouble trying to target all people. Why? Because we're not relatable to all people. Solomon created his content plan to where he could relate to the poorest of people, to the wealthiest of other kings. And that's another punchline I want to hit you with. Look at this. 
all kings of the earth. So even people in his industry that would be considered as competition, this is why I was saying it at the beginning, you won't have no competition because even your so-called competitors will will realize like, yo, um, I need him as an ally or her as an ally. I need her or him as an ally. I think we need to go deeper into this chapter. I want y'all to see how much money. Uh, all right. Okay, where were we at? We started at 29. Okay, 40,000 horsemen, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's look at some of his assets because a lot of y'all be like, yo, you know, I just want some money. Uh, uh, pause, right? He had assets too, okay? If you ain't got no cash yet, it's probably because you don't own no assets. So let's check out the assets because when you pass down an inheritance for your children's children, like the scripture said a good man would do, you don't want to just pass down money, right? Because you might have some retarded, irresponsible kids that are just jack up everything. You need assets too and wisdom. That combination is what you want to pass down to your children. Wisdom, money as a defense, and assets. Okay. All right. So watch this. 21. See, all we have to do is copy, guys. Copy and paste. And we'll be better than we ever were before. Look, and Solomon reigned over all kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines and unto the border of Egypt. They brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. Come on. These are all people from other people's kingdoms. Other people's kingdoms, other people's, other kingdoms, citizens were coming and, and serving Solomon. That's like me leaving the United States, which I did, and coming to Panama and saying, I love the Panamanian president. <laughs> You hear me? Like they literally left from over there and, and was like, yo, I'm finna go. He's, he's way smarter than I can. You hear me? All right. And Solomon's provision for one day, pay attention. Solomon's provision for one day was 30 measures of flour and three score me measures of meal. Watch this. 10 fat oxen and 20 oxen out of the pasture. Pay attention. And an hundred sheep besides hearts and roebucks and fallow deer and fat and fowl. For he had dominion over all the region on this side of the river from Tifsa even to Azza over all the kings. Pay attention. So think of the gurus and stuff. There are certain gurus that you hold over all the gurus. Uh, for now, we'll just give you an example. Maybe Alex Hormozzi, I say for now. Right. You will consider him over all the gurus that are out there right now. OK, so it says over all the kings on this side of the river and he had peace. That's another thing. You do that. This man was better than all of everybody, but they still loved him. <laughs> so when people think that you just got to be controversial in order to be great or bring attention to yourself, you got to make a lot of enemies and all of that stuff. Solomon was able to achieve all of this and he had peace on all sides round about him. Now, pay attention. OK, so we're going to jump down to 26. It says, and Solomon had 40,000 stalls. How big your house got to be for you to have 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen? Now, Abraham, our forefather, had 300 families that that was raised in his house. 300. Imagine how big his house was. People be thinking we were broken in, in the ancient days. Please. <laughs> you can't even fit your cousin in your house. <laughs> he had 300. And Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. Back then, the people that worked for you, you had to provide housing and care for. It wasn't like how it is right now with all this slave crap going on. So imagine how much money you got to have in order to be able to take care of 12,000 families. It was 12,000 horsemen, but I'm assuming those men were married and had kids. Oh, snap. Name a dude that can do this now. I don't care how impressive any of these people are. Name one that can do this. Now watch this. And those officers provided victual for King Solomon. And for all that came unto King Solomon's table, every man in his month, they lacked nothing. <laughs> they lacked nothing. So, so everybody he came across that served him was living good. And it all spawned from his wisdom. This is what I'm trying to tell you guys. You need to do whatever it takes. And that's what I'm doing this year. Watch and observe, but hopefully you take action. This year, I will be the wisest, the wisest marketer slash advertiser you've ever seen. Trust me. Why? Why am I so confident? Because the formula is laid out right here. I mean, I don't have to guess. I don't have to make it up or experiment. I know exactly what to do. Okay. So it says he took our everybody. Okay. Bar bar barley also and straw for the horses. And dromedaries brought they unto the place where the officers were, every man according to his charge. And Solomon gave, I mean, the God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding and seed and much. We already read this part. And largeness of heart, even to the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of East country and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men than of, you know, y'all heard on this part. I'm trying to go to the part where, um, where it talked about how much the kings had to pay him for consultations. 
Now, so uh, Myron Golden talks about this. He got his business model from Solomon. He realized that Solomon did consultations to the other kings, right? He did consultations to the other kings. Uh, let me see. How much did the queen of Sheba pay him? Where is that at? I'm going to have to find that in a minute. But he had business. He did He did import exports right here. Like, look, and where we go. All right. Okay. Now, therefore, command thou that they hew, hew me uh, cedar trees out of Lebanon, and my servants shall be with thy servants. And until thee will I give hire for thy servants, according to all that thou shalt appoint. For thou knowest that there is not among us any that can skill to hew timber like unto the Sidonians. So watch this. It's talking about how he had to like make deals with the other nations and do import export. Watch this. And Hiram uh, sent to Solomon saying, I have considered the things which thou sentest to me for, and I will do all thy desire concerning timber of cedar and concerning timber of fir. So think about this. Watch this. My servants shall bring them down from Lebanon unto the sea, and I will convey them by sea in floats. This is talking about shipment containers and stuff that you guys is going from Walmart to, and bringing it to me in Panama. You hear me? <laughs> It says, and will cause them to be discharged there and thou shalt receive them and thou shalt accomplish my desire in giving food for my household. So Hiram or Hiram gave Solomon cedar trees and fir trees according to all his desire. And Solomon gave Hiram 20,000 measures of wheat for food to his household and 20 measures of pure oil thus so uh, gave Solomon and Hiram year by year. So they had a long standing agreement and stuff. I'm trying to find uh, where it was talking about how much Queen Sheba paid them for consultations. Let's go to Google real quick because y'all need to see this. Okay. Uh, how much did, uh, how much gold did Queen Sheba give Solomon? Now watch this. Watch this and tell me if any of these dudes is getting this. Pause. You hear me? Like tell me if any of them are, are getting this, right? Okay. So now, and you have to excuse me, they didn't have dollars back then. So use your freaking imagination or you can convert it on Google somewhere. OK, so basically it's more than any of these people. The Jeff Bezos is the, the Tesla, Elon Musk's that dude that's supposed to be the richest dude. Now they own Louis Vuitton. None of them. None of them. Watch this. OK, so watch this. And the Navy also of him that brought gold from Ophir brought in from Ophir great plenty of Alma trees and precious stones. And a king made of the Alma uh, trees, pillars for the house of the Lord and for the king's house. Harps also and psalteries for singers. There came no such almo uh, trees, nor were uh, seen unto this day. And King Solomon gave unto the queen of Sheba all her desire, whatsoever she asked, beside that which Solomon gave her of his royal bounty. Now watch this. So she turned and went to her country and she and her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 600 Three score and six talents of gold. Beside that, he had the merchantmen and of the traffic of the spice merchants and all of the kings of Arabia and all of the governors of this, uh, the country. Now watch this. And King Solomon made 200 targets of beaten gold. 600 shekels of gold went to one target and he made 300 shields of beaten. Their, their shields that they went to war with was made out of gold. And we'd be struggling to pay a freaking light bill. You hear me? That's how we knew doing it. We, that's how you know we're doing something wrong. You hear me? <laughs> Come on. They was bringing him mountains of gold just to hear him speak in person. That's why I charge for a webinar. I don't charge mountains of gold like Solomon because I ain't there yet. <laughs> but he charged people to come hear him speak in person. And y'all be thinking, oh, these gurus scamming. Why are they charging just to hear me, uh, just so I can hear them speak? Because they speak in wisdom. And if you take action to it, then you can change your freaking life. Stop just watching YouTube videos and actually do what they say. <gasps> Woo, that's a dang on revelation right there. You hear me? So, <laughs> so are y'all seeing all of this stemmed from his wisdom? He acts the most high wisdom. It's a lot of wise people, but they're quiet. Oh, snap. So that must mean they ain't that wise. Because if you're wise, you got to put action to that. If you're wise, then you know that God wants you to spread the wisdom then. So he had a content plan of 3,000 parables and 105 songs. And some other stuff we probably ain't get to read yet, right? So it led the outcome of all of that. The outcome of that content creation plan right there was him being the richest and wisest king of all time. Now tell me what guru can teach you that. Exactly. Now y'all see why I be having my head in the Bible. Because it got stories like this in there. And it's not just stories. This is real. And he, it shows you exactly what they do. The business plan, it said year by year. So that means he was getting paid all of these mountains of gold every single year. He had people on subscriptions. 
back when it was no computers and no internet. It was no Netflix, none of that. It was no Prime. He invented subscriptions-based models. He, he invented the consultation business model, uh, uh, the consulting business model. Like, come on, come on. But you never would have heard of Solomon. He just would have been another king. He would have been wise, but but you never would have heard of him if he didn't create the content. And this is why I'm trying to get y'all to do A lot of y'all are shy, but want to make money. Okay, well, guess what? It's a trade-off. It's a trade-off. If you want to be shy, don't want to make content, don't want your face to be seen, don't want to put yourself out there, guess what you can do? You can run paid ads. Oh man, well, that can get expensive. Exactly. So you pick one. You want a nine to five? Do you still want to, you want to keep that? No. Well, you got to gird your loins, stop being a baby, grow up, and you need to pick one then. You're either going to do paid traffic, you're going to do content creation, or you're going to do both, or you're going to hire somebody to do it. Like it needs to be either someone or something needs to be doing it. Like it needs to be done. It's not optional. When I, when I, when you see me disappear from the, the, uh, the public and stuff, I'm not just disappearing. I'm going to replace myself with people that's going to be creating the freaking content and keep it going. Doing the interviews, doing the press, answering the questions, making the integrations, the partnerships and all of that. Somebody is going to be doing that for me when I leave. For now, I'm going to do it because it has to be done. It's mandatory. Y'all be wanting the end goal without even starting at the beginning. I mean, well, you don't even got to start at the beginning. You can start in the freaking middle. At least this is you starting at the middle. You got the knowledge without even buying a course. I literally just showed you a content creation plan from the wisest and richest guru. Yeah, I said it. Wisest and richest guru of all time, King Solomon. Let's come back through here just in case y'all ain't heard. He spake 3,000 proverbs. Those are wise sayings, parables, analogies, and breakdowns in a simplistic fashion. And he created 1,005 songs that also contained these parables, wise sayings, analogies, similes, and metaphors, and breakdowns and stuff. And he put them in forms of trees, uh, uh, things that you saw on a daily basis so that it would stick in your mind. You would think about it anytime. Imagine that. Imagine if people thought of you when they started up their car. Imagine if people thought of you and your brand or your, your course or coaching, whatever it is, when they just started up their car. Like, huh? How would they work? How would that work? Okay. Well, I'll just freestyle off the top of my head again. Okay. Okay. Success is like a car. Okay. Your car is on the side of the road. It's snowing. Things are difficult. All you need is a jump and somebody to come push. You. That jump can be this video that you're watching right now. It will give you inspiration. It will spark you. You are the car that's on the side of the road waiting for success, waiting to get some money. You just needed this spark. And the push is the course that I'm going to give you with implementation and coaching. So now you, the car, can hop right back on the highway to success. See? So now when your car breaks down, and I just did all that off the top of my head. Now when your car breaks down or you're trying to start up your car, you would associate it with what I'm talking about. I want My goal is to get you to associate uh, 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 anything, like anything that's happening throughout your day with me. How can I get you to think about me when you're taking a freaking sip of water? I'll create content and I'll reference the water. Being broke is like the worst form of dehydration in the driest, hottest desert, right? If only you can have that sip of water that will bring life back to you. That sip of water is just a loan or, or a certain amount of money that will pull you out of the freaking suffering that you're going through. What if I told you that my course is the equivalent of this ice cold, ice cold bottle of water? So when you take a sip of my course, soon that desert that you've been stuck in, the desert of poverty is super hot and dry. Soon you start to see an oasis. You start to see plants growing where the dry ground used to be. Oh, through the cracks, you start to see water showing. That's you making it to $5,000 a month and that's covering all of your expenses. You start to feel a weight off of your shoulders. This is you walking from the desert into the freaking promised land, land of milk and honey and everything, right? So take a sip of the water. The course is now available. Boom. See, so now when you take a sip of the freaking water, you're thinking about getting out of that dry desert of poverty, right? And now my course, you see what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's all just off the top of my head, y'all. So like, it, it, it would be better if I had time. I just wanted to show you guys examples instead of just telling it, uh, telling the formula to you. Show you guys examples of how you will be able to be relatable. You will take a scenario that people are used to being in or one of the worst scenarios that people would hate to be in and you'll position your solution as of whatever is going to save them from that situation. But you want to do it in a non-salesy way, if possible, but make it to where it's so simple, to where they get it. Yeah, man, if I was in a freaking desert for hours 
And all I was thinking about was water. Dog, I would pay a freaking hundred bucks for a bottle of water. See, like right now we go in the store and we'll see a bottle of water for three or four bucks. We go to Six Flags or Disney World. We see a bottle of water for 10 bucks. And we're like, this? That is freaking expensive. But if you was in a desert, your plane crashed or your car broke down and you was in a freaking desert and some dude walked past, assuming you're not a murderer, <laughs> but some dude walked past and he just got water and it's for sale. And he says, it's a hundred bucks. Are you going to sit there and fight with him over the price? No, you're not. So some of you guys are in situations, but I guess you're unaware that you're in that desert. I guess you got comfortable in that desert because somebody will give you a solution, which is the equivalent of that water. And you're like, mm, I'll wait for the next water man to come around in the desert. <laughs> you hear me? OK, so through your content, you can you can break things down in a simplistic fashion to where it becomes common sense to your target audience and even to your competitors. And you just start influencing everybody for the better and helping people change their lives. That's what you want to do with your content creation plan. So like I said, no matter what your niche or your industry is, what you want to do today is write down all of the different topics that you guys normally discuss in there. And then you want to find everyday relatable stuff. It can be the freaking TV in your room. It can be your dog that walked past. It can be your uh, Jehovah Witness that be knocking on the door, getting on your nerves. <laughs> like uh, whatever you want to find relatable situations and scenarios and, 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 and tie them in with the topics that you have right here so that people begin to understand them more and associate the solution with you. And you can only do that effectively with a good content creation plan. Lo siento. That means I'm sorry. I don't have any content creation plan for sale. <laughs> this is, you know, just a Sabbath class live stream. I haven't done one in a long time. And since I am on my journey to begin this this year, uh, along with my goal of the 10,000 interviews I told you guys about, I'm going to be very busy. So I wanted to hold myself accountable by uh, making this public at the same time, inspiring, helping you guys get a jump start or a spark to your freaking car that's been sitting on the side of the road broke in the wallet. <laughs> no, I was playing. Okay, so hopefully this will inspire you. Content creation is the way. If you don't want to do it yourself, then you need to find a stand-in. Find someone else that's not afraid to get on camera. Partner with them. Give them the topics that you want them to go on. Uh, apply scripture to it. Study things that are already successful in the natural order every day. Study that. People are flawed. So we need to just stop studying just average people just because they got a little bit of money. You'll see them come back later on and do an updated video because they was wrong, right? So you want the scripture says, let all your ways be established. So I'm going to study things that's been proven to work time and time and time and time and time again. You know about King Solomon three, four thousand years later after his death because it worked. His content creation plan worked, right? Who else can you tell me from back then besides Christ? Like who, who else? Name somebody. I mean, it's, it, you're, you're, it's going to be hard pressed. You understand? So obviously it worked. OK, right. So you can leave things to chance or. Spend gazillions of dollars uh, with paid ads and then all the money stops coming in when you cut the ads off and all that. But I'm going to put everything I got into content creation, uh, brand jacking and wisdom output uh, this year. So that next year, Lord's will, I make it there and next year when I disappear from the public, my business is the brand is just unmatched and it would take you a millennium to catch up if you're in my industry. Right. So <laughs> that's that's the type of output I'm going to be doing. You understand what I'm saying? Like, and it ain't just going to be me. It'll be partners as well whatever to get the mission out. You understand? So you guys have any questions for me? Like I'm looking at the chat right now. Uh, if you have any questions, let me go out and then come back in. If you have any questions, then I'll be able to answer them now. Okay. Man, I missed all these dang on uh, comments. Mrs. Issy says, you talking on this one. <laughs> okay. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. Um, King Bay, C. King Bay says, yes, sir. Natural order, divine order. For sure, for sure. So any questions? Any questions? Y'all might want to watch this back again. Not just for me or anything like that, for these same, these scriptures. Like, I'm trying to tell y'all, man, I, in, in my private community, Anti-Job University private community, every, um, what's it, Thursday, excuse me, we do something called mind transfer sessions. And on those mind transfer sessions, I um, read the audio book or listen to the audio books that have helped me shape my mind to get to the success and the income that I've been able to achieve since I started so that people don't have to start from scratch. I can help. I can literally transfer my thought patterns to them. So you don't have to start at the bottom. You can just start thinking, taking some of my thought patterns and then building on top of them so you can have your own. And that, that way people won't just be running around trying to figure stuff out. So like, dog, 
I want you guys to transfer the thinking of Solomon to you. <laughs> like he's way better than me. Transfer the thought process, business model, wisdom, notoriety, reputation, all of that that Solomon is known for. Study him so you can transfer that to you. What he studied, start studying. Now you should look at a tree completely different. Now you should look at a car completely different. Now you should be able to get inspiration from anything, a freaking lamp, a lightning bolt. Like why, does, why how does a lightning bolt do this or do that? Like why does not lightning not strike the same place? Like all of this extra stuff you can study and then look deeper into business. It will give you the edge if you can apply these natural things to your business. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Bruce said, thanks for the knowledge. You are welcome. I praise to the most high. It is this happy day. I'm going to go ahead and get over here and rest because I have a huge week ahead of me. You guys will be seeing a flurry of content, whether that's with me or with somebody that I hire or somebody that I interview or somebody that I partner with that has the same message and mission as me. And I'm just going to like, yo, you don't have to watch it all. You understand? I understand. But I'm going to put it out there. Just let you know. Give you a heads up. If you see hella notifications, <laughs> if you see a notification talking about, yo, it's a song out, all of that. Just know that the song is not going to be some uh, uh, some bull crap. It's not going to be some, uh, yo, I'm, I'm shining this type of bull crap, you know, that you hear on the radio or nothing like that. I'm, it's going to be on our topics. I gave you guys my content plan. So I'm just doing it to reach as many different mediums as I possibly can, different platforms. I'm going to be creating hella audio books and everything, too. So I'm, I'm trying to catch people in all different ways. Wherever they are, I'm trying to catch them. OK. All right. So what do you guys think? Did you guys enjoy this Sabbath day class? Let me know. Yeah, I'm getting hot as a mug when I do these classes. OK. All right. All right, y'all. So I'm going to ride out to the sunset. Shalom.